Hello everyone, welcome back to the Military Schedule channel. Defense in Depth, an effective military strategy. Defense in Depth is a tactic that was crucial in World War II, but is still of great value in modern warfare. An example of this was in the fight for control of the Pacific Islands, where the Japanese employed this tactic by spreading their soldiers in multiple defensive lines from the beaches towards the center of the lines. This defensive protection was extremely effective, as the American troops advancing into the interior of the islands suffered attacks from practically all sides, and had a high casualty rate. Another notable example of the defense in-depth strategy in World War II was in the Battle of Kursk on the Eastern Front. The Soviets created a concentric defense in-depth around the city of Kursk, which included more than a million and a half soldiers and more than 6,400 kilometers of trenches, anti-tank guns, cannons, mines and barbed wire. The total distance of defense in depth was more than 480 kilometers. The Germans, who had the best armored and most experienced soldiers in the world, launched a concentrated pincer-like attack aimed at the Kursk salient, but the Soviets learned of the German plans, using the Enigma machine, and prepared for the attack. When the German offensive finally began, the greatest armored battle in all of history began. The Germans, protected by their best troops, could not advance more than 56 kilometers at the end of two weeks of bloody battles. Although it is an effective strategy, defense in depth is not perfect. Constant retreats can seriously affect the morale of the defensive forces, and coordination in the rear must be done by the commander in charge of defense, constantly moving his forces along the perimeter. Any failure to communicate or delay in response can result in complete chaos. Furthermore, this strategy does not work well in small, densely populated countries. Currently, defense in depth is widely employed in countries that seek to protect their air defense by positioning radars and anti-aircraft batteries along their entire territory. This means that even if some of these defenses are destroyed, others will continue to operate normally, maintaining the protection of the territory. During the Vietnam War, American forces also employed defense in depth positioning defensive lines concentric around their bases. No matter how many weapons and military equipment a nation has at its disposal, if its leaders and commanders do not apply the right strategy on the battlefield, the result will be defeat. History is replete with such cases, as in the Arab-Israeli wars that raged in the second half of the 20th century. On three occasions, Israel was attacked by large and powerful coalitions of Arab countries, even facing more than a dozen countries at the same time. For example, in the Six-Day War, Israel, with just over 100,000 trained soldiers, defeated an Arab force of 12 countries, with over 500,000 soldiers, all of them attacking from all sides and armed with the most advanced Soviet weapons of that time. How did Israel survive this and other wars? It was thanks to a combination of factors, but mainly thanks to the strategy applied on the battlefield. Nowadays, the goal of defense in depth is to slow down the enemy advance by wearing down their forces as they advance through the terrain. If you, as the person responsible for the defense of a region, decide to concentrate all your available forces on the front line, and the enemy, by inflicting a very strong and concentrated attack, manages to break through a point on that line, your entire rearguard and all your communication and supply routes will be compromised, with the risk that the enemy will surround and destroy large areas of your front line. One way to avoid this is to position your forces in successive defensive lines, with each line and each defensive position tasked with supporting the defense of other units that are under attack. At one point, the standard strategy involves creating a provisional front line made up of more inexperienced soldiers whose mission is to deal with the impact of the enemy's initial assault. Behind this first protected line will be other units located at strategic, well-fortified defensive points, such as on top of small hills or on the opposite bank of rivers. The units deployed further ahead will retreat and position themselves at these new points, making the defense more concentrated and larger. This defensive formation is replicated over and over again, in a long succession of fortifications, trenches, and mobile minefields. And in the middle of all this, there is a detachment made up of highly experienced units, very well trained and equipped, 
whose objective is to run towards the most possible points of attack, or to exploit with counterattacks any breach in the enemy's advance. Leave your opinion in the comments of the video. See you next time.